I'm not afraid of anything. I'm sorry if I die and resent anything that robs you of the unpredictability of tomorrow. Money has a tendency to do that. Security does. Now I live life. Someone in a previous vlog, I don't remember exactly which one it was, voiced a, a comment of concern like, where's the cafe racer? Where are all the bikes that I'm used to seeing? And typically what I do in most of my vlogs, if I need to move around in the shed quite a bit, is pull all the bikes out and let them kind of like sit outside, which is annoying and time consuming. And then bringing them all back in sucks to do as well. So I got permission long, long ago to take this huge work shop table thing that was in here out and, uh, and start bringing some bikes inside to give myself a little bit more room for video production and better workspace because there's nothing worse than like trying to. So no, all the bikes are not gone. They're just, they're just in a little bit safer of an environment and uh, they're living their best life inside. As it comes. Hold down the fork. On a day this nice, I would typically not drive my car with a bike in it to work because it's a bit of a sin to do. But because we've got such big plans for this evening and my mountain bike is currently packed in Angelo's car for a short but exciting family visit trip at the end of the workday, I kind of know that I'm going to be spending a lot of time sitting, especially driving to work sitting in my office chair and if I don't bring a bike with me I'm just gonna be sitting in a car all evening as well so I'm not overly interested in doing that and the best way to make all of this time manageable and get to spend some time on two wheels today is to bring a BMX and waste the lunch jumping around on it remember when I said Trying not to waste any good summer days. Yeah, I'm still trying to live up to that. It doesn't always need to be extravagant. It just needs to be something. I'm going to Moncton tonight to visit my family and it also gives me an opportunity to fix my brother's bike, which we were talking about in a vlog not long ago this week. Actually, it was this week. Um, but I'm gonna forget to bring the derailleur alignment gauge and spacers for a possible attempt at a single speed setup. So I'm gonna make an Instagram post and I'm gonna ask that someone leave a comment at like 3.30 or four o'clock to remind me to bring that stuff. I'll forget. Okay. And... Okay, I've got everything we need. All right, this is the culprit. I think this is fixable. Rideable for a bit, possibly 
not forever. But check this out. That's family support right there. I currently have the correct tools to make the repairs that we need to make to my brother's bike and get it riding again at least for tomorrow. Problem is, is there's not really a place to put a bike at my parents' house to actually work on it. And that is going to be the main challenge. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do this on the ground. actually looking at the damage now. So remember what we were talking about in the last-ish vlog about properly setting your limit screws or not laying a bike over on its side because you can bend the derailleur hanger and shift it into the wheel? Well this is like a, this is a really prime example of that. Obviously this is quite bent and you can see even from here that the derailleur cage is actually quite bent from spoke grabbing it and throwing everything into the wheel way harder. Textbook shift into the wheel problem. I thought when Andrew was telling me about it that it might have been quite a bit worse, but I think we can fix it. At least I think we should at least try because I've also got a plan B. So when this aluminum fragile derailleur hanger decides to snap as we bend it back, we can attempt to set this up as a single speed with the one single speed cog that I brought with me that I'm just sort of like really fingers crossed, going for luck type of thing to get uh, to get like a unicorn gear out of this. Whether or not it happens, I don't know. But I am, I am, I am hopeful that this is going to straighten out without much issue. Threads. Somebody, nobody know. Okay, in this case, not going to work. It actually bent inside where the hanger threads are, so you can't actually get the tool in far enough. And uh, with what we have in there, it just kind of made the problem much worse. Okay, let's try single speeding it. I brought, I brought single speed spacers, and I brought, I have a 15 tooth single speed cog that's nice and tall, so that if there's any sort of bouncing going around, the chain shouldn't just pop off. And we have a 32 tooth narrow wide chain ring. I'm just gonna like, just gonna put it together and, and just see what happens. I immediately feel less bad about this. This chain is broken anyway. Mint. So I went to a bike shop here called My Bike Shop, been there a bunch of times, um, and I was kind of hoping to either get like a 16 tooth, a 17 or an 18 to try and get like decent chain tension. All Jim had in stock was a 16, which helped quite a bit. When I put it on, it really did kind of bring the chain tension up. But throwing the like idler cog, <laughs> throwing the extra idler cog in there, this, which we've talked about doing before, and I've never really done, kind of made up all the difference. So the length of the teeth on the front and rear cog weren't allowing the chain to fall off, but for that like added bit of security, idler cog for the wind. We've been riding it around, testing it everywhere we can to try and make the chain kind of bobble around 
and fall off and we've yet to succeed. Here, I'm gonna drop off the deck over here. Kind of gross, but weekend of ride fix. Be all right.